death had to take Roosevelt sleeping, for if he had been awake, there would have been a fight. It was a dark, stormy night at the Roosevelt Long Island Mansion. Illuminated by candlelight, the lavish household was empty save for two. The patriarch of the Roosevelt family, Theodore himself, and a grisly specter. A hooded figure draped in a black coat, dragging a long scythe behind him. The spirit and his weapon hovered over the ground, his ethereal form creating a quiet but chilling howl as he moved. There was no question as to his intention. Theodore's time had come, and the Reaper aimed to collect his dark harvest. The Spectre phased through the door to Roosevelt's chamber and his feet hit the ground with a bony click, his ethereal form being made solid to execute his deadly deed. He approached the bed and exposed a skeletal hand. All it would take is one touch. A shotgun fired from behind death, striking the figure in the back and knocking him forward onto the bed, revealing the sleeping figure to be nothing but a decoy. Bully! I finally caught him! Theodore Roosevelt boasted, emerging from a secret hiding place behind a bookshelf. Ah, I've caught many a respectable catch in my day, but this is without equal my greatest feat yet. Theodore Roosevelt, the man who conquered death. Roosevelt's jubilation would be cut short by a rattling noise as it became clear the figure was still moving. Slowly it rose into its ethereal form before its bare skull turned fully around to face Roosevelt. You should have gone for the head. Sweet Dakota, I should have anticipated that. You've done, done nothing, nothing but, but delay, delay the inevitable. Hot damn! A little more time is all any of us really want anyway. I'll take my chances. Roosevelt would fire again, his gun blasting right through the spectre. Border dash! There is no escape, Theodore. <laughs> you fool! Don't you realize you're in my house? On my battlefield? I'm not the one that needs to escape. You are. Theodore would disappear behind his bookcase, the Reaper following behind but finding only a dark stone hallway leading deep into the bowels of the mansion. Come and get me! The Reaper would stalk the hallway, irritated by Roosevelt's game and by his surroundings, which quickly turned into a maze. Repeatedly, he'd run into decoy after decoy, forcing the Reaper into a state of temporary vulnerability to attempt to capture Roosevelt's soul. But time and time again, he'd narrowly evade cleverly concealed traps. Neither a trapdoor nor cartridge traps or even a fire trap were enough to stop the specter of death itself. Finally, the Reaper found himself face to face with a door. He phased right through it and saw Roosevelt sitting at a desk, frantically scribbling some mathematics onto a piece of paper. You win, spirit. I know when I'm at the end of my road. A bony click hit the stone floor and began advancing toward Roosevelt as he spun around in his chair to face the Reaper, who wound his scythe back preparing to swing. I suppose I may as well accept my- AHA! Theodore stomped his foot onto a pressure plate on the floor and before the Reaper knew what hit him, a loud blast and a cannonball rocketing across the room and right through the Reaper's skull. Smoke filled the room and Roosevelt's ears were ringing, but a proud smile beamed across his face as he watched the Reaper's cloak and scythe fall to the ground. <laughs> I knew my numbers were right. Oh, you put up some worthy resistance, my friend. But none can best Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt walked over to the cloak and picked it up along with the scythe, finding that the Reaper's bones had turned to dust. Bah! You've left me nothing to mount but your attire. Shame about your head. You would have made quite the display piece. Wait, what? Suddenly, the Reaper's robes began to dissolve in Roosevelt's hands. He attempted to throw them away, but they stuck to him like tar. What is this? Roosevelt's fingers appeared to grow skeletal and a strange feeling resonated through his body. It was overwhelming and before he knew it, he was out cold. He awoke hours later, confused but feeling strangely powerful. As he pressed his hand to the floor to pick himself up, he was shocked to see bony digits where his fingers had once been. The Reaper's cloak was now draped over his body and his own clothes had vanished. Panic had took him for a moment, until... Well, well, you've really done it this time, haven't you, Theodore? Roosevelt looked around the room and only after a moment spotted a strange blue apparition on his shoulder. Roosevelt was startled and frightened for a moment until he realized the apparition appeared to be Woodrow Wilson. Oh, this guy. Ah, well, Theodore, I'm sure you've got plenty of questions. My first question is what are you doing on my shoulder? Well, you see, the powers that be thought it best you have someone familiar to coach you through your arrangement. Huh. I was once a professor, after all. Arrangement? 
Woodrow, what is all this? Why are you a ghost? Well, now it looks like I'll need to give you a quick crash course. You see, you just killed the Grim Reaper. No small feat, but not something the higher-ups can really let slide. He filled an important job, you know, and that job is yours. Congratulations, Mr. Reaper. Balder Dash, this must be some kind of fever dream. Oh, it's no fever dream, old boy. This is all quite real. Theodore turned to see a small apparition of William Howard Taft on his other shoulder, dressed in a red onesie sporting a pair of horns. Bill? You're dead? What? Oh no, I, I sensed a commotion and thought I'd stop by. Why are you dressed like the devil? These are my pajamas. Some of us are trying to sleep at this hour. With those last words, Taft vanished. Maybe this is a favorite dream. I was not expecting him. Roosevelt stood up and walked to a mirror, getting a full look at his ghastly visage. His eyes looked hollow and his cheeks were sunken in. His hair was wispy white and his skin was pale as bone. No. This is actually happening, isn't it? He slowly touched a bony finger to his face. What does this existence hold for me, Woodrow? Am I condemned to reap the souls of sickly children and the poor elderly? Well, not quite, Theodore. You see, most spirits, when their time comes, naturally go to where they need to go. But some spirits are more stubborn. Not like yourself. Well, that's where the Reaper comes in, pushing those stubborn souls over to the other side. What do you mean when that time comes? If a man is not ready to die, and he has it in him to live, why must he die? Well, there's a natural balance to the world, Theodore. Everyone has a time and place to be. And if someone stays longer than they're supposed to, all sorts of unforeseen consequences can occur. A series of unplanned events can spiral out of control and shake the stability of the world. You let an artist's father live a few years longer than he's supposed to, the next thing you know, that artist is invading three-fourths of Europe. Hmm. So how do I know when there's a soul to be reaped? And where? Well, that's easy. You have a list. Suddenly, a list appeared before Roosevelt, an extensive list that seemed to include hundreds of names. Good glory, these are all people that have lived longer than they were supposed to. Yes, your predecessor had a habit of letting his work pile up. Well, I suppose it's best if I get to work. Roosevelt began by crossing off the very top name on the list, his own. And so it began. For over a year, Theodore would gradually chip away at the list, tracking down those stubborn souls, some of whom remained in the public eye and others who knew their time was up and did everything they could to lay low. Roosevelt had set himself on the greatest hunt of all time, a hunt which brought him up against deadly aviator Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron, who spent as much time in the sky as he could, dreading the day that death finally came for him. He would be a difficult first challenge, but Roosevelt ultimately got his man. He trekked out west to see for himself the spectacle of Buffalo Bill, the sharpshooting frontiersman who even in his old age refused to go easily. Roosevelt admired Bill and gave him a fighting chance, but in the end Roosevelt proved himself to be the better huntsman. He journeyed to the tundras of Russia to locate the elusive Rasputin, a figure that many in the Siberian wastes came to know as less of a man and more of a revenant, an unkillable beast cursed to walk the earth eternally. Roosevelt brought that eternity to a swift conclusion. His latest hunt would bring him to southern Mexico to find revolutionary general Emiliano Zapata, a man who on his own may have posed a challenge but faced Roosevelt with a small army of guerrilla fighters. Roosevelt was unable to kill the soldiers whose time had not yet come, but managed to isolate his target and finish the job. My, my. When this whole ordeal began, I was concerned this would be a punishment. But frankly, I think I'm quite good at this reaping business. Well, I'm glad you think so. You've done a fine job knocking out some of the most stubborn souls on our list. At this rate, we might be able to clear the whole thing in a matter of years. <laughs> really? That quickly, eh? What exactly is there for me to do if we clear the list? Well, more stubborn souls are just inevitability. You'll get more work. You'll just have to be patient. And... What can I do in that time? Well, anything you want, I suppose. You do need to reap at regular intervals to sustain yourself, I will say. But you should know that your predecessors tended to do the bare minimum to get by. Not being able to instantly teleport to your target is kind of an inconvenience, I understand. But you are the most enthusiastic reaper in a long time. And I think the higher-ups will recognize that. <laughs> well, that certainly does me proud. All right, then. 
What is the next name on the list? Looks like I'm going back to Russia. Bah! Russia? We were just there. This is a pretty big job. This fellow's already caught a few butterflies we won't be able to put back in the cage. Let me see the list. Tsar Nicholas Romanov II. Ha! <laughs> well now, I remember old Nicholas. I'm surprised he made it on this list, frankly. Careful, Theodore. Nicholas isn't the man he used to be. He's on this list for a reason. Please, how bad could he be? Roosevelt would see for himself how much Nicholas and Russia had changed, both scarred by the effects of the failed Bolshevik Revolution and slowly recovering, growing even stronger than they once were. Roosevelt phased his way into Nicholas's new palace still under construction and began surveilling the area to plan his attack. Finally, he made his way to the Tsar's personal study, phasing into the room and seeing Nicholas seated facing away from him, just staring at his fireplace. Theodore materialized, his feet hitting the floor with a bony click. I was not expecting company this evening. The Tsar stood from his seat and turned around. To what do I owe this visit? Your time has come, Nicholas. I've arrived to collect. Roosevelt dropped his hood, revealing his ghastly face. Mr. Roosevelt? <laughs> I must say, the years have not been kind to you. I thought you had died. Correction. I have become death. Roosevelt brandished his scythe, and Nicholas suddenly took this encounter more seriously. I... did not expect death to taunt me with a specter of my past. The last time I saw you, Mr. Roosevelt, you had denied me my right to claim Korea. Nicholas drew a silver blade. Rest assured, I will not allow you to deny me any more what is rightfully mine. <laughs> do you know who you're talking to, Nicky? I'm death itself. I do not fear death. I have God on my side. As do I. Roosevelt turned to face Wilson. We do, right? Wilson would shrug and gesture that it's about 50-50. Suddenly, Nicholas swiped at Roosevelt, who dematerialized, but feeling a pain grasped at his stomach where the sword had grazed. Damn it, you cut me! Wait, you cut me? Wilson, what's going on? God golly! Well, that's a holy weapon, Theodore. What are you talking about? Theodore, that sword has been blessed by the Patriarch of Moscow. The blade was forged using metal from the Lance of Longinus, and the grip contains splinters of the True Cross. In short, it can cut you. And you're telling me all of this now? Nicholas came in for another slash, but Theodore caught the blade with his scythe. The two now found themselves locked in a struggle, blades clashing, the room being torn asunder in a struggle of life and death. Finally, the battle came to an end. Nicholas shattered Theodore's scythe and knocked him to the ground. Blade pressed against Theodore's chest. Nicholas was prepared to deal the killing blow. Very well, Nicholas. You have bested me. I would like to provide you forewarning, however. Killing me will bring on to you the same fate you see before you today. Eternal life at the cost of bringing death. Nicholas looked down at Theodore, now with pity in place of fear. I don't intend to live forever, Mr. Roosevelt. But there is still much work for me to do. There is so much I owe to the Russian people. I do not have a right to die until my work is complete. I would like to make a deal with you. I will spare your life if you will allow me to continue living mine just until I have done all I need to do. Once that is done, I will surrender myself willingly. Roosevelt would turn to Wilson on his shoulder. Is that something we can do? You bet it is. A deal with death is as good as gold, though there is a caveat. An extension of life is not total security from death. It's just security from us reaping him. If Nicholas is killed in some other way before he does what he wants to do, he will still die. We're providing temporary mortality, not invulnerability. Very well, Nicholas. You have a deal. And like that, a deal was struck. Tsar Nicholas would continue to walk the mortal realm, furthering his mission of protecting Russia from the rising tide of opposition growing across Europe and the world. Knowing well that though he had just bought himself some more time, the threats from abroad were still rapidly racing toward him. Roosevelt would remain the Reaper, keeping a close eye upon Nicholas, but continuing his eternal hunt for the most dangerous souls. Thank you all for watching, and a big thanks to all our voice actors who helped make this possible. If you'd like to see more content like this, let us know in the comments below, and if you'd like to help support us, you can donate to us on Patreon.
The US of Z thanks you for watching. Mr. Z, out.